Ano nga ba yung pinag-uusapan pag sinasabi natin flattening the curve? And bakit kailangan natin ng mass testing? And bakit now na? At ano yung ambag ko dito sa pag-uusapan na to? Today, pag-uusapan natin to and more. Ano nga ba yung mass testing dito, Whitney? video or as of the posting of this video I would have already celebrated my 24th birthday happy birthday happy birthday happy happy birthday to me <laughs> yes can you see the video na to. party okay, I plan to celebrate it with my quarantine family maybe have a nice dinner and you know just have a little fun and maybe talk to some friends and family online it's a confusing time but we will be grateful nonetheless and speaking of gratefulness bumili ako ng maraming Lazada packages recently uh, medyo kadire how much I bought but if you want me to show you my haul of all the, all the stuff that I got from Lazada please let me know it includes this beautiful sponge Oh, zoom in, yeah. Oh, it's your So if you want to watch that video, please let me know. Comment down below. Before we move on to the video, please like and subscribe. On lapit na natin mag 100. 85 subscribers na tayo. Just 15 more till 100. Excuse me, ma'am. Do you have five minutes for gay rights? No? Perfect. So this week, we're starting a new series in the channel called Queries. So ito yung mga tanong-tanong, mga things na medyo hindi pa natin uh, nag-grasp yung concept and we want to learn more about it. So this series will be anything under the sun that we're curious about and then we'll learn more about it together. This week, what we're gonna talk about is mass testing! Look over there! So what is mass testing? Mass testing is a wider scope of testing on a certain population. So in the case here in the Philippines, meaning yun noon, ay palalawakin natin yung pag-test to a bigger audience. So for example, include natin yung mga frontliners, include natin yung high-risk populations para mas informed yung mga decisions na gagawin natin in terms of the responses that we make. So, paano ba ginagawa yung mass testing? What are the tests that are available? There are two tests that we can use right now. Uh, we'll go through them one by one and we'll also go through their pros and cons. Number one is the NAAT test or the swab test. NAAT stands for Nucleic Acid Amplification Test. Sa test na to, yung ginagawa nilang method ay yung tinatawag na RRT-PCR. Ito yung nakikita natin siguro sa mga... Uh, releases ng DOH or the Department of Health or ng RITM, the Research Institute for Tropical Medicine. So this method detects the genetic material of the virus. So yung ginagawa is sinaswab sa ilong yun, ini-insert, tapos ginaganon sinaswab siya, medyo uncomfortable kapag tinitingnan nga eh. Pero yun yung kailangan para magkaroon ng enough sample from the person so that matatest yung genetic material. Mayroon na itong pros and cons. Yung pros ng specific test na to ay it's very reliable kasi yung ginagawa niya is it detects the genetic material talaga. Second, pwede na nga siya mag-detect even before the symptoms show up. So that means you can ready yourself even before whatever symptoms show up for you and you can isolate yourself from your family or whoever you live with. For the cons naman, number one con is it takes a while for the test results to come out. It could take hours or days, and here in the Philippines, usually mga one to two days before the tests come out. So, nagkakaroon din tayo ng backlog of people who uh, are tested for this and want the results. That's why, until now, uh, meron pa rin thousands of backlogs from March and April that need to be confirmed by 
the DOH and RIPN. Three weeks later, many months later. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new one. Uh, another con which is related to that is nagkakaroon sometimes ng false positive, meaning hindi talaga positive pero the tests show that it was positive, which which is why they need to do confirmatory testing for it. Confirmatory testing is testing the sample again just to be sure na talagang positive yung person. Another con for this is the possibility of human error, meaning the is sufficient yung sample na nakuha from the person. So that means na either magkakaroon ng false negative kasi uh, hindi enough or error talaga na hindi, walang genetic material na nakuha from the person. So this could happen and if ever that happens, kailangan talagang i-retest. That needs to be avoided at all costs. Kasi uh, another con is, ito yung mas mahal na option from the two tests that we have available. Yung second testing ay yung rapid antibody testing. So yung test na naman to ay blood test, meaning kumuha ng blood to see if you have the antibodies for the virus. So when we get sick, when we get a viral infection, our body naturally creates antibodies to fight it. So, in this case, it, we, what we are trying to detect are antibodies created to fight COVID-19. This can come in two forms, IgM or IgG. So, for me, it helped me to uh, make it into IgM, meaning my sakit, MNG, as in galing na. And I had to make that shit clear, bitch! So, IgM is when the person still has the infection, the viral infection, and infectious pa rin sila. Meaning they still have to stay at home, they have to isolate themselves as soon as possible. IgG or galing na means that the person has already recovered from the virus. And in this case, you can donate your plasma for the therapy of those who haven't recovered yet. For the pros of this test, uh, mabilis siya, mura, at saka madaling gamitin. Usually mga 15 minutes, tapos na yung test. It's half of the price of a swab test. Actually, this is what a lot of LGUs right now, like including Marikina, use to test uh, people now that they're going back to work. This can also result in false positives, just like uh, the swab test. But this time, because yun niya, it's not as accurate, sometimes magkaharun talaga siya ng false positive. That's why the brand uh, and the manufacturer really matter here. And if there are any medical professionals, baka you can enlighten us more on this because. I ain't a medical professional and I ain't claiming to be one, okay? No dogs, but you got a lot of bad bitches. But I think both of these tools can be used to further our mass testing efforts here in the Philippines. So now that we know how to test people or what tests to use, sino naman yung ita test natin? So first are of course the symptomatic people or the ones who are under investigation. Number two, Frontliners, all of the healthcare workers that we have should be tested for it because they're the most exposed to people who have COVID. Uh, we also have to test those who are part of the high risk population. So, who are part of our high risk population? Those who have diabetes, those who are hypertensive, immunosuppressed, the elderly, and the tension centers. Some of these conditions make it difficult for the person to recover, and these are the ones that have proven to have more serious complications when they get the virus, including those who have diabetes and hypertension. And especially those who are immunosuppressed, like those who have cancer, the virus might show stronger symptoms for these people. I included the tension centers because they are in such crowded places that a certain condition, a disease or a virus can easily spread within the jails and dormitories that they stay in. Apart from testing though, we have to also address the overpopulation in jails. What that looks like, uh, it can mean different things, but testing alone in detention centers will, cannot solve what we need to solve within there, which is that even if we test, that still means that there's still a big population that can get the virus. So we have to address that overpopulation somehow. Contact tracing is also very important in terms of who we should test because this uh, helps us see who the person who tested positive for COVID has interacted with in the past week or in the past two weeks 
so that they can also get tested themselves. Kunwari, kung ako nag-positive ako, yung mga tao dito sa condo na to, mununotify rin sila to get tested. This will help us if we make it more efficient for us to detect rin kung sino yung meron ng virus. Kasi nakikita natin yung mga links sa mga tao who already have the virus and see if it's also transmitted to the people around them. If we can't have it the way that Korea and New Zealand has it, maybe we can find a way for us to do it ourselves. I know we can figure it out. Filipinos are very creative and somehow we can make this happen and we need to make it happen. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So now that we discussed who should be tested, bakit ba natin kailangan gawin talaga yung mass testing na to? Why? 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 Three reasons. One, people deserve to live and the only way that we can really help them live is through mass testing. The more that we are in the unknown and the more that we don't know the actual number of cases in our population, the more that people are going to get infected. We already have one of the highest rates of mortalities of our frontliners and we don't want to add to that number and we sure you don't want to add to the number of fellow Filipinos who pass away because of COVID and we can only do so much to help them live if we test and test a bigger number of our population so that we can respond to it as early as possible. Second, we need to mass test because we need to know what's up with the virus now, where what's the state, especially for those who are asymptomatic. Symptomatic just means that these are people who have the virus but aren't showing symptoms. And this could be a concern for a lot of us because uh, they can still pass on the virus to someone else. And what if that someone else is part of the high-risk population as we talked about? So testing more people and then knowing where the asymptomatic carriers are situated in, whether, for example, they're a part of this group or another group, that could also help us make better informed decisions on what we're going to do next when it comes to this virus or this pandemic. Number three, if we don't do it, this will just go on and on until we have a vaccine. You know, a lot of us agree that we don't want another lockdown to happen. And a lot of us can't uh, survive if another lockdown happens because they have to go out to earn money. So if we mass test, and we should do it, uh, the best time to mass test was yesterday, but I guess today is better than tomorrow. So we should do it because we don't want another wave of COVID cases to come up. And again, hindi tayo makakagawa ng informed decisions or informed responses if we don't test a greater number of our population. So if I had a birthday wish this year, I would let forego all of my wishes, all of the things that I want. All of it. And that's all with like four A's, eight O's, and three L's. And I would just want us to have mass testing here in the Philippines. Ora sa talaga para sa atin na mag mass test kasi deserve natin and kailangan ng ating kapong Pilipino. Let's try to storm social media and other platforms that we can talk to people. Maybe share this video if you want to to inform people why we need mass testing now and why we need to do it for our country. Hashtag mass testing now! I wish you would! I <laughs> And if you need more resources to learn about mass testing, I have linked the articles that I used as resources for this video down below. So thank you for watching this video. I hope na nakatulong ako and that we've learned something new about mass testing today. If you would like to share this to other people so that they get more informed about what mass testing is and why we need it here in the Philippines, please do so. Uh, please like and subscribe again to the channel. Um, you want to hit the bell notification so that you get an update every time there's a new video coming. And then you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok with the handle at Queer's Life for more behind the scenes updates on what's going on next for YouTube. So thank you again and goodbye, Bella Bucks!